Ten years later, with the first Persian invasion, Xerxes, the new king of the Archimenid Persian Empire, declared another attack to conquer Greece. According to some historians, the size of the Persian army during the second invasion was between 120,000 to 300,000 soldiers. Xerxes was motivated to continue expanding his empire. The attack was not only a land battle, but also a naval war, consisting of 700 to 800 warships. When Xerxes arrived in the Greek territory, many of the northern cities surrendered without a fight, one of which was the city of Thebes. Sparta and Athens, however, defied the Persian king and formed resistance. We will defend our people and our lands to the last breath. By all the gods, my sword will fall from my cold, dead hand before I retreat. Make the same oath. Be courageous. Themistocles, an Athenian politician and general, formed a strategy on which they blockaded the Persian advances, giving time to the Athenians to evacuate. Thermopylae and the Strait of Artemisium were the primary target to defend against the advancing Persians. Before the Persian invasion, Athens and Sparta were two warring cities. King Leonidas and Themistocles agreed to make an alliance to counter the Persian force. Leonidas, although at age of 60, handpicked 300 Spartan elites with descendants ensuring them their lineage. are victorious and live. I will sacrifice to Zeus and Ares for their favor and help in our defense. But we mortals must do our parts as well. Fight with honor and all will be well. Leonidas was appointed as the leader of the ground troops who defended the narrow passage of Thermophili. According to historians, the Spartan king was always accompanied by other 6,300 troops, some being from Thebes, some Helots, Thespians, and Phocians. Themistocles was the admiral of the Greek fleet at the Strait of Artemisia. Thermopylae was considered in the ancient times as the gates to Hades due to its high temperature and narrow passage. This passage is also the quickest way to the southern cities of Greece.
At the arrival of Xerxes at Thermopylae, he waited for four days before attacking. This was to make the Allies retreat by showing his massive Persian army. But this didn't cause any effects at the Greeks. Leonidas and his army was determined to defend the passage. Xerxes sent his archers to kill some of the Greeks, but the Athenians and Spartan hoplites were heavily armored, and their shield were able to protect them from the Arabs. The Persians did little damage to the hoplites. The Persian king was displeased while watching on a top side of the hill. <laughs> Xerxes sent 10,000 melee infantry to harass the defense of the Allies. The attack of Xerxes lasted for a whole day until he commanded his troops to retreat. It was a victory for the Greeks. The next day, Xerxes sent another group of archers to eliminate some defenders.
After the volley shots, Xerxes sent his elite troops the Immortals. Elite of the elite soldiers, equipped with a tall wicker shield, sling, spear, bow and arrow. They were consistently 10,000 soldiers and for every casualties they received, they would replace them, ensuring to maintain the manpower. I do not like fighting Parthians. They have little concept of honor and no concept at all of bravery. They value trickery, lies, and cunning. I have heard that rats do much the same. <laughs> Make sure they do not bite you! Though the Immortals were specially well-trained warriors, the Greeks were still able to hold them, but this didn't prevent casualties. It was still another victory of the Greek resistance. General! At that evening, because of a Greek named Ephialtes, he told about the Persian king about the passage behind the Allies' line. Order the file commanders to make ready their men! You heard him! Men. Get ready! Go and make ready! Xerxes sent 20,000 men to attack the flank of the Greek allies. At dawn of the third day, the Phocians, guarding the path above, saw that the Persian army and quickly arm themselves. Hydarnes, hasty to get in time at the main Greek position, ordered his men to shoot volleys of arrows to the Phocians. They tried resisting, but this, unfortunately, 
wasn't successful. A runner told to Leonidas that their allies weren't able to hold the Persians General! back. They don't worry about you. And so the Spartan king made a war council. At the council, Leonidas proposed the choice to retreat and give up the position. Some of the Greeks agreed, and so they fled the battlefield. Leonidas, however, and his Spartans stayed. With them, a small contingent of other soldiers stayed. A total of 1,400 soldiers were left at Thermopylae to meet their destiny. At dawn of the third day, the Persian army charged the front lines of the Allies' defense. While the Greeks were busy, the Immortals and Hydanes attacked the exposed area of the impregnable Allies' formation. It was only a matter of time to meet their death. Leonidas died in battle. Though the remaining Greeks knew it was a suicide mission, they didn't turn their back. The Spartans and their allies are now remembered as the heroes of Thermopylae sacrificing their lives to save their Greek brothers and sister against Xerxes. To commemorate Leonidas and his bravery, a lion was erected in Sparta. Mm. 